What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com. Today I'm bringing you guys my top five issues of the Galaxy Note 7 out of the box. I've had this phone now for about four days and I've been able to use it. So I wanna give you guys some heads up on the issues I've noticed. So in case you're thinking of purchasing the phone, you wanna know what you're gonna encounter, what sort of problems there are. Now I am a Samsung fan, as you guys know, and I'm not ashamed to say that. I'm always happy to tell you my bias right up front. Uh, so of course, it is difficult for me to make a top five issues video. I love Samsung's hardware in general, but the Note 7 has actually been somewhat of a disappointment for me so far in a lot of facets. And of course, since I am a Samsung fan, you know that I'm not making that up. I would not want to say bad things about Samsung if it wasn't really true. So let me get into some of these issues. The first issue is battery life. I've been getting about three and a half to four hours maximum of my battery life. I took some screenshots of my halfway through projections. This is when I had 54% left a couple days ago, had about two hours screen on time. So that projects out to a little over four hours. That was the most I ever got. There were a couple other days there where I had much worse battery life than that. So if we go back to the gallery, uh, I took some screenshots where I had very, very low uh, projections. I think this was the second day. So here you can see I've got 49% remaining on the phone and you've got an hour and 19 screen on time. That projects out to a little under three hours screen on time. And of course that was the second cycle, so it's not easy to say. So far my later cycles, my fourth, fifth, and sixth cycles, the average has been about three and a half to four hours. I don't think that's very good though, to be honest with you. I get about five hours on the Exynos S7 Edge. I got about four and a half hours steadily, even on the Snapdragon S7 Edge, which I still own. And I've been getting about four and a half to five hours on the Moto Z Force. So with my regular usage, which is a lot heavier than I've been putting on the Note 7 the first few days, because I've been working uh, back at my regular day job, and I haven't had a lot of chances to do a lot of video watching or Pokemon Go playing. So I am disappointed with the battery life. That, of course, could be issued a software update for T-Mobile, and they could fix that. But that is something to keep in mind. Uh, the next thing is the touch wet, touch whiz lag. Now, I did a speed test of the Axon 7. Some people said that I was delaying too much on the Axon 7. I went back and watched it. There is a little bit of extra delay on the Axon 7, admittedly, but it's not more than the three seconds, the difference between the two phones. So those two phones are about right the same in terms of the speed, which is exactly what I said. So there's a couple seconds difference either way between them, which is pretty much identical in terms of performance. But the Note 7 has noticeable lag. So right now I'm running Action Launcher 3, but even with Action Launcher 3, I see a lot of lag between jumping between various, um, jumping between various menus, etc., uh, and also various apps. So that is something to keep in mind. Uh, I have seen lag, and also especially in Hangouts. Hangouts is one app where there's always a substantial amount of lag. So overall, with Samsung phones, whenever I use Hangouts, eventually after a few months, I start seeing lag when typing, sort of input, and moving the around the menus in Hangouts. If you use Hangouts a lot, that's something to keep in mind. Normally, that doesn't happen for a few months, but on the Samsung Note 7, I've had quite a bit of Hangouts lag right out of the box. And then also just playing some games and watching some movies, I've had a little bit of overheating. Well, not overheating, but you know, getting a little warmer than I would like and a little bit warmer than I ever noticed with the S7 Edge. So the TouchWiz lag is there, it's prevalent. That's something, again, they could easily fix in a software update, but that is something to be aware of um, that you should keep in mind when you buy the phone. It's not quite as smooth as I'd like the new Grace UX. I thought that there'd be some improvements on smoothness. Now the next thing is the Gorilla Glass 5. I know you guys won't be able to see this here, but on the very bottom corner here of my Note 7 here, it's very difficult to see on the camera. I have some light scratching right here. Not sure where it came from. I haven't put my keys in my pocket or anything like that. I've just been using the phone normally without a case for the majority of the time since I've had it. And I've gotten quite a few little micro scratches there on the bottom. They're not super noticeable, but it is something to keep in mind. Jerry rig everything. He did a little test in his Mohs scale of hardness. That was refuted by Corning. They say that it actually is uh, as durable or more durable than Gorilla Glass 4 in terms of scratching. So far, I have, do have a few scratches though, so and a, quite a few other people around the internet do as well. So of course, the results kind of speak for themselves in my opinion. Uh, I'll continue using it without a case for a little bit uh, and see what else happens. But so far, I have seen a little bit of scratching down in this area. And again, I haven't put change or keys or anything in my pocket. That's just from regular use. Um, so I have really no idea how the scratching happened. Just taking it in my pocket, perhaps some, some dirt dust or something like that, I don't know. But I've never had really scratching issues with the S7 Edge in the time I've been using it for the last five months. 
Uh, the next thing is S-Note. Uh, and action memo. Now this won't be a big deal for everybody because not everybody uses the S Pen of course but if you do use the S Pen like I do when you take out the S Pen right now I have it set to go directly to a note for that reason but before when you used to take out the S Pen you get your little menu here you get your little memu, memo you would have action memo as one of the options now create note is there but action memo is better because you could just pen a short note to your desktop in a small little yellow note and I really like that because it was easier to come back to now you have to go into the Create Note app and then create a note and then you can pin that to your desktop, uh, but it's not quite as easy. Now one of the things you could do of course is you could do screen write with the screen off and then pin that to your desktop immediately, but that's a little more inconvenient. So overall Samsung got rid of some of the features with the S Pen this version. They actually got rid of the S Note app entirely, which a lot of the S Pen power users like myself really enjoyed. A lot of the core S Pen features are still there, but some of these conveniences like Action Memo and being able to quickly just pin that to the screen and also interact with those notifications is gone. Also, there was a great feature with the S Pen where you could actually uh, solve mathematical formulas using Wolfram Alpha directly uh, from Action Memo. Now that is something that I would use more than anyone else as a math professor, but that also appears to be removed. Uh, I'll look further into that. If anyone knows about that, let me know, but I haven't found a way to do that on this version with the S Pen. Uh, and then the last thing is something that I already mentioned in a previous video. The iris scanner is just not very accurate or fast. Um, if you go to the home screen, you know, I have the iris scanner set up, but it's very, very difficult to use compared to the fingerprint scanner. You guys can see here, there's no way it's going to work behind the camera. Um, probably not anyway. Nope. So you can see there, uh, but even if I have it under perfect conditions with my glasses on, it doesn't work at all. So if you have glasses or contacts, it's pretty hard to use. Um, and it's not very fast or accurate compared to the fingerprint scanner. Even if you don't have glasses, I tried it with my glasses off. It's still a pain to hold it up and align it with your eyes. It's not something you're really going to want to use over the fingerprint scanner. I, hopefully that will come along in future iterations. Samsung will improve it, just like the, finger, the fingerprint scanner was terrible in the Galaxy S5. And now it's super fast on the Galaxy Note 7, the S7 Edge, etc. So that's not a huge deal because obviously that's a feature that's sort of just an extra feature, kind of a novelty for me. But it is something to keep in mind. If you're buying this for, you know, the cool iris scanner, you're probably not going to be all that impressed and wowed with it. All right, so those are five things that I've noticed. Uh, for me, the, mem the memory management and the overall TouchWiz lag, not being able to hold a lot of apps in memory, and also the lag navigating through the menus, navigating through basic apps like Hangouts, those are unacceptable for a phone out of the box. The battery life is pretty mediocre. Actually, I would say poor compared to the other flagships I'm using currently. And then, of course, the Gorilla Glass 5 scratching, that is definitely an issue. Um, these scratches are not huge, they're not deep, but I don't know how that's going to develop over time, and that's definitely something you should keep in mind um, when buying the phone. In any case, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments about this, drop me a comment below. You can find me on Google+, Twitter, Instagram with the links in the description. You can also find me at dopetechdaily.com. Please like and subscribe if you guys enjoy my content so that I can make future videos like this. I appreciate you guys checking out this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.